Amos chapter 14. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I want to talk about today, my subject is when it's called strange. When it is called strange. And uh, Exodus chapter 14, uh, Job chapter 1, and I know there's several verses in Job, but I'm not going to read uh, all those verses. I just need Job 121, and then um, I want to read uh, 1 Peter, I believe it is, also that I'd like to read uh, a verse from verse chapter 4, 1 Peter. But Exodus 1 says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they may turn and encamp before Pahiroth, between Migdal and the sea over against Belzephon. Before it shall before it shall ye encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel that they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. Now if you would just pay close attention to our reading thus far here. God is the one that gave instructions and directions to Moses where to lead the people of God to. And while to Pharaoh and his armies and the enemies of Israel, this was an ideal place for the people of God to be because now they said they're in trap. They're entrapped here because now they are blocked in or hindered in uh, here by the sea and by the marshes, and they have an, in, an inescapable place. And it goes on to say here, Pharaoh would say to the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, this is what God says, that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Egyptians may know that I am the Lord, and they did so. I, I love this. And the reason why I love this is because, amen, that God was the one to lead them into this, what you would call maybe predicament. And uh, here Israel more than likely was singing and they were worshiping and they were thanking God for their deliverance. But here it is. God said, hold on. I want me one more round of glory from Pharaoh. I got one more lesson that I'm going to teach him. So see, some of you, God told you to do some things and it, you look at it and say, well, this is jacked up. This is crazy what God told me to do, because look at the predicament that I'm in. But you, you have to understand that God wants the maximum glory out of your life. And he will lead you into some strange stuff sometime. And uh, what God will tell you to do with your checkbook don't make sense to the banker, but it makes sense to God. And he says here, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled. Now, they said that, listen, Pharaoh, these people took flight but God didn't call it a flight. God called it a pilgrimage. But yet, Pharaoh's men called it a flight. Amen. Praise God. And he says here, and Pharaoh and his servants was turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. Now, this, you, it has to be a God thing because Pharaoh and his people even inquired of one another, why did we make such a foolish decision to let these people go? And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them all the horses and chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen, his army, overtook them and camping by the sea beside Paharath, before Baal Zephon. And when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, 
Has thou taken us away to die in the wilderness? Wherefore has thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? And if you would skip with me down to verse 14, it says, The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Job chapter 1, verse 21, if you would with me. And Job said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, for the most part, and I know I haven't gone to 1 Peter 4 and 12, but it simply says, Think it not strange concerning the fiery trials that are to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. Praise God. Now, here in Job, in verse 21 here, we only know a single aspect of the God that Job here is speaking about. We only know the God that gives. But we don't want to be familiar with the God that also takes away. But it is necessary because we have all these cliches in church and uh, we talk about God opening one door and God, you know, making a way for me and all of this thing here. We just, we say all of these things, but we fail to understand the process of how God really operates. Uh, God doesn't open another door without closing a previous door. Uh, we talk about new beginnings, but see, in order for there to be a new beginning, there has to be an ending to something in order for you to have a beginning of something, if you would, please, praise God. Our struggle in our walk in God is that we fail to understand that God must close out certain chapters or certain aspects or things in our lives in order for him to bring us into a new thing or a new phase of our walk or our relationship with him. And many times we are crying over the things that God is trying to take away from us because he has something greater that he wants to give us. But God will never give you the greater until you have the faith to let go the previous or the lesser, if you would. And sometimes we'll say, well, this thing was good. I, I really enjoyed it. It was a blessing to me. It may have been. But it is only a blessing to you for the time period that God has determined for it to be a blessing. Uh, there are some things in your life that has an exp expiration date. There are some people in your life that has an expiration date. There are some circumstances in your life that has an expiration date. It can only thrive and survive for the time period that God has graced it to serve the purpose in your life. Anybody understand what I'm saying here? And many times the saints, amen, we are discouraged and we are frustrated. And this is what I was sharing with them on Wednesday night. Much, much of our frustration and disappointment and sadness does not come from what God has not done or what God is doing. Uh, much of our disappointment and our frustration comes from us having, amen, a perception of what success is from a world standard or from a world's viewpoint, praise God. Uh, we let the world tell us what success is and what we have to have and what we need to accomplish and what we need to do to be considered successful. But uh, I want to tell you something. Man's standards are not God's standards and God's standards are not man's standards. Uh, some of us, amen, are sad because some people don't see us the way we want them to see us. Uh, uh, they don't regard us the way we want them to regard us because we want to project a certain image to people so they would have a certain perception of us. But I want you to understand something, amen, that God wants glory out of your life. Uh, and God will do whatever it takes to get him some glory out of your life. Even if it makes you look bad to other folks, amen, for God to get some glory out of your life, God will let you look bad to other folks. Uh, oh, praise God, everything he does is not sweet. 
and creamy in your life. Oh, there are some things that God will allow to take place because he has ordained it to take place. And, uh, and what you're calling it is not what God calls it, praise God. You have to understand that there are ups and downs in everything, in every aspect of life. And as I told you, you can't have an increase until there's first a decrease. Uh, it's, it's, it's there's something that God does with your life. And the scripture says that uh, when we look at the ceremony, amen, of the Lord's Supper, the Bible says that he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it. It is called, amen, the principle of breaking of bread is what it's called. And that's just what God will do with your life. Uh, oh, he'll bless you and then he'll break you and then he'll give you to help somebody else, praise God. But the only aspect we know and understand and appreciate is the blessing part. Oh, but God is not going to let you get sassy on him. He's not going to let you get to where you think that you don't need him. Oh, he's going to have you in a place that you know that I need him every minute of the hour and every hour of the day. And I can't do anything without him. Oh, some of you, instead of you, amen, looking sad about the condition of your life, you ought to be thankful that you're still hooked up with Jesus. And if things were any different in your life, you probably wouldn't be serving him right now. You probably wouldn't know him if things were not what they are in your life. Oh, the apostle Paul said, I learned to be content with every state that I'm in. Oh, whatever you may call it a mess. You may call it jacked up, but I'm here to tell you that God got you set up that you could ever, amen, forever be yoked up with him. Oh, he got you in a place that when you call him at the nighttime, he'll hear and answer your prayer. When you get up in the morning, you don't have to worry about whether joy is going to show up. You know he promised you joy. Oh, somebody here give your God some praise here. Oh, something here that the Bible tells us about. Amen. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said this. He said, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or drink or what you shall wear. Oh, it amazes me how long some of us said that we've been serving God and walking with God and we still don't trust God for our daily bread. We're still saddened because oh, we don't see it stacked up in the refrigerator and in the cabinet and in the pantry, praise God. But your God promise that he's going to take care of you. And some of you need to move out of that mindset of fearing every day about whether you're going to make it or not. You ought to be at a place, amen, of conclusion that you know that your God somehow, some way, he's going to take care of you. Oh, my God, do I have a witness in here? Oh, it would be a sad, it would be a sad household if your children went to bed every night. Amen. Worrying about whether or not you were going to give them something to eat and give them something to wear and take care of them. Oh, your child need to go get counseling from a psychiatrist. Why? And the psychiatrist revealed to the parents. Your child have worried themselves sick because they worry about whether there's going to be any food in the house the next morning they're going to have any clothes to wear. Are they going to have a safe place to sleep? Oh, if the psychiatrist gave you that diagnosis for your child, you'll be utterly embarrassed to know that your child been living like that. Oh, well, a whole lot of us live like that every day. Oh, amen. We bring embarrassment, praise God, to the kingdom of God. Why? Because we don't walk in the confidence and the faith and the assurance that my God is going to take care of me. Oh, I may not have everything somebody else have, but every day he gives me what I need. Every day he does what I need done. Every day he watches over me. Every day he take me and bring me back. Do I have anybody here that'll stand on your feet and say, my God is going to take care of me. Not only is he going to, he's taking care of me. Oh, Oh, bless your name. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, this sounds a little elementary, but I'm one of those. I'm willing to go back and get 
somebody, amen, that seemed to be, amen, left behind. I'm willing to leave the 99 and go get the one that may not have made their way to the place that they ought to be, praise God. Amen, praise God. I'm not trying to impress you today. I'm trying to get you to catch up where you can be in the flow of what God wants to do in your life. Oh, my God, I feel like blessing him right now. Oh, what you have to understand here. You have to understand that God takes the strange stuff of your life. And see, the word strange means foreign. Uh, what it simply means is that it's not logical. It's not the usual, praise God. It's not what you expected. It don't seem like it goes along with uh, the situation, praise God. Oh, the Bible says, don't you think? think it's strange. The fiery trials that ought to try you. Oh, bless God. Oh, don't get bent all out of shape. Don't lose your spiritual composure because folks are acting funny and acting crazy. Amen with you. Oh, don't, don't you lose your spiritual composure because family members are talking about you, ostracizing and criticizing you. Don't you lose your composure. Oh, the reason why they're talking it's because you didn't turn out how they expected you to be. You exceeded their expectation by the grace of God. Oh, yeah, they predicted you were going to be a failure. They predicted you weren't going to ever be nothing, have nothing, and do nothing. But look at God. God got you composed. God got you standing on your two feet. God got you a place that you can run and hide in. And you can run and hide in him, praise God. Oh, they thought you were fragile. They thought you were frivolous. They thought you was easily to be intimidated. But look what God has done. The word of God that God is feeding you with. The grace that he have on your life. Oh, my God, some people don't like the fact that when they see you the next day, you're still looking good. Amen. You're still looking like you got something somewhere to go. Even if it's nothing but to Walmart, it's still somewhere to go. Oh, you're walking like you got the faith to believe that God is taking you somewhere. I may not be there yet, but I'm on my way. Give me a little volume here. Oh, somebody give him some thanks here. Oh, praise God. You ought to count it all joy. All of the crazy stuff. Amen. That people have conjured up against you. You ought to count it all joy. Every time somebody comes tell you something somebody said, you ought to clap your hands and say, thank you, Jesus. I thank you for that. Oh, yeah, make them think you're crazy. Make them think you don't lost your mind. Don't respond the usual way and say something back. You ought to break out in a praise. You ought to break out in a dance. What you dancing for, nut? I'm dancing because I need what you said about me because it's going to motivate me to get closer to God and to walk closer. Oh, my God, my God, do I have. I'm talking to anybody in here. If they're not talking, you're not doing anything. If they're not talking, you're not living anything. You ought to live to somebody talk about you. You ought to walk to somebody talk about you. Oh, y'all afraid of that, huh? You're afraid of that. Oh, but I want to tell you something. Uh, oh, God will take the negativity uh, uh, that comes to your life uh, and make it positive. Praise God. Uh, amen. He said this. Uh, he said he'll cause all things uh, to work together for the good uh, to them that love God. He didn't say all things are good. He said, but I'll take everything. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care how they treat you. I don't care what they do against you. I I'm going to make it work together for your good. You're going to triumph over all of this. Oh, give me somebody here. Give me somebody here that I'm talking to now. Every time it looks like you're doing better, somebody want to see if they can drag it down. 
Oh, now y'all ain't going to like what I'm about to say here. Oh, praise God. Uh, you're not going to like what I'm about to say here. Uh, oh, sometimes people want to take your focus uh, and tell you to focus. Uh, amen. On folks who are not your color. <laughs> but I found out in life. Uh, amen. Praise God. It's not my kin folks. Uh, but it's my skin folks that cause me the most problem. Uh, oh, it's those that have the same tint uh, and the same shade I have. Uh, oh, I remember the old folks describing it as a bunch of crabs. Uh, when they see one trying to get out, the other crabs reach up and pull them back down some of you know you got some of that in your family you got some family members ain't happy for you you got some family members wish you didn't make it but you ought to stand up and decree and say the devil is a liar oh I got grace on my life I got mercy on my life I can be anything he says I can be I can have everything he says I can have An old man, an old man told me this many years ago. He told me, he said, son, listen, uh, uh, the biggest, the biggest folks you got to watch out for, he said, are fellow pastors. He said, nobody would try to destroy you more than another pastor. Uh, that's what he told me. Amen. He pastored 60 something years, so I listened to him. He said, Your biggest enemies are going to come from those that carry the Bible. See, listen, listen. God don't let everything sweet happen in your life. See, because listen, you've heard me tell you this before. There were some craftsmen, some skilled men. They were experts in, in making, amen, the incense that they burned in the censers in the tabernacle. It was a sweet smelling perfume. And they put it in a censer that a coal was inside, a red hot coal, and they poured that incense in that censer and the priest walked through the tabernacle and spread it the scent of that perfume in the tabernacle they filled the whole house with that aroma in the tabernacle of God but listen that incense wasn't made out of everything sweet there were some bitter herbs that was mixed in with the sweet that caused that aroma to be exactly what God wanted it to be. Now listen to this now. Now see, when God gave these men these special skills, he graced them. This is what would happen. They'll take those men who were called experts in, in uh, sculpturing things. And God would tell them that this particular item need to be made out of gold. And this is how the grace of God works. Those men would take their different hammers and their different tools. And as they struck that piece of gold, it would divinely become what God said it was to be. You know why? Because nobody got any praise or any glory out of the office they served in. All the glory was God's. And some of you need to understand something in here that you don't have what it takes for some men to consider you to be great. But God says, I got grace enough to make you great. And you're not going to give anybody the praise. You're not going to give anybody the glory. You're not going to be indebted to your mama or your daddy for what I did in your life. But the praise is mine. The glory is mine. I'm the one that chose you. I'm the one that made you. I'm the one that made a way for you. And so, you have to understand, God is not going to let you have all sweet experiences and come in here like you're really praising him. No, no, no. It takes somebody who loves God and sincere about God to give him praise. And I'm talking about when you know you've been through hell and you might be in hell. But you can still reminisce about the goodness of God. You can reminisce about the power of God in your life. And you can take the bitter and the sweet and make a sweet smelling Savior in the house of God and give him some glory. Am I talking to anybody in here? 
Tell somebody, say, take the bitter and the sweet and give God some glory. Now listen, you can't give him glory. You can purpose it in your mind. But if it don't come out of your mouth, it ain't glory till it comes out. It ain't glory till you give it. It ain't glory because you made it. It's glory when you give it. And when you open your mouth. See, it's out of your belly. Gonna flow rivers of living water. But listen, in you it's a well. But when it come out of you, it's a river. And the river flows out of the bank. Your lips are the bank to the river. And you got to open your mouth so the river can flow out of your mouth. Somebody here, open your mouth and give God some glory in this place. I don't want to hear about this shy stuff in the Lord. I don't want to hear about this shy stuff in the Lord. Uh, you're not as shy as you claim to be. You can't be shy and got four children. No, no, no. See, you call it shy. I call it lack of appreciation, lack of gratitude, because you can't tell me that you can't recognize that God has been with you even when you wasn't with him. You can't recognize how he blessed you, how he took care of you. How he... Don't tell me that. If you recognize it, if you adore him, something is going to build up inside of you that you're going to say, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah. Listen. Don't try to explain to nobody why you praise God like you praise God. They still wouldn't understand it. Only you know where he brought you from. Oh. Strange stuff. Stuff happening that you didn't think, didn't expect to happen. It, it looked like it goes against, it goes against everything that you was believing God for. And God said, yes, but I want to get glory one more time. I want me one more round of glory out of your life. I'm going to leave you in this situation just for a little while longer. Because I want everybody to know you to think that you're not coming out. I want everybody to think that you're not overcoming. I want them to think you're not going to make it. And then I'm going to show up and I'm going to show out and I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to deliver you. Listen, the word of God said that he created the smith that blows the coals in the fire. God is the one that determines the temperature of your test. He's the one that determines the intensity of your test. I'm just, I want to talk to somebody here that can get with me today and understand that you're talking to me, pastor. You're talking to me. I'm right in the middle of what you're talking about. I'm going through hell right now, and I can't figure it out. 
but I'm just believing and trusting that God has me covered. I got to quit here. I got to quit. Come on and bless him, somebody. Come on and bless him, somebody. Listen. Listen. This is something. I need y'all to listen to this. This is something he gave me last night. And then he reminded me of it this morning. I got to say this to you. And that is this. Listen to me very carefully. There are some of you in here that you're in the midst of some stuff that you don't even have the strength to fight back. It's people coming against you. They're conspiring against you. They're strategizing against you. And you don't even have the strength to fight back. You used to have the strength to fight back. There was a time in your life they wouldn't have tried what they tried. But God got you in a holding pattern. God got you in a place that he won't let you have the strength to fight back because he wants you to be still and know that he's God. He wants you to be still and know that he's the one that got this situation under control. You don't have to fight this battle. You got family members and people that you truly love dearly and they're rising up against you. They're saying all kind of crazy stuff about you. And you are saying, where in the world is this coming from? And you want to say something back. You know enough stuff about them that if you wanted to get even, you can put them to shame. But God won't let you do it. He won't let you do it. He won't let you do it. As much as that thing build up in you and you want to let it out, God won't let you open your mouth and say it. Because he's going to let, he's going to let the naysayers, he's going to let those who ostracize and criticize you, he's going to let them see that you're his child and he's your God. Uh, you all hear what I'm telling you? That's what he's going to do. They're going to know without a doubt that the Lord is on your side. God say, Moses, take the people right here. I want them right here is where I want them. Pharaoh is going to interpret it to mean one thing, but I got a whole different reason why I'm allowing this. He's going to think that this is going to give him an easy victory. He's going to think that their leadership is a fool to guide them to where I said to go. He said, but it's a setup. It's a setup. He said, I'm going to get me one more round of glory. Pharaoh is going to know that there is no God like the God of Israel. Some of you, what you're going through is because God is going to let folks know that there's no God like your God. There's no father like your heavenly father is. You got to stop worrying yourself all night long over it. You got to stop that. You got to find a praise that you can have consistently and thank God when you lay your head on your pillow at night, you give him praise. And when you pop your eyes open in the morning, you give him praise.
The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You got to bless him in giving and you got to bless him when he takes away. You got to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. The only reason he took it is because I became too reliant upon it. There's some people in your life that God moved out of your life. Because you gave them too much credit for where you are. God is the one that have blessed you and exalted you and magnified his grace in your life. It's the Lord that have done these marvelous things in your life. And if there's anybody want any credit for it, you need to steer clear of them. Nothing wrong with thanking somebody for helping you and assisting you, but the praise is his. The glory is his. Father, thank you right now. Come on, pray with us right now while these are, are here at this altar. Father, we thank you. Bring the plaque, if you would, deacons. Father, we thank you. Come on, bless him right now. Come on, somebody, bless him right now. Out of my belly shall flow rivers of living water. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your long suffering. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your goodness, God. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus.